my goodness. Aston Villa have qualified for Europe. I am in disbelief, shock, bewilderment, all of it. I Unai Emery, I am so in love with this man. I am I I feel I feel like kind of emotional right now. I kind of feel like I want to the, the the tears are sort of welling up in my eyes at the thought of what I've I've just witnessed. When Professor Unai Emery came into this football club in October, Aston Villa looked like a team that were going to get relegated. We looked like a team that were going to be where today Leicester, Leeds, and Everton were in uh, on the final day because we were terrible. There was no coherence in how we played. Nothing. We looked awful under a manager who didn't know what he was doing, quite frankly. And we've replaced him with a manager who clearly, firstly, knows what the hell he's doing. Secondly, has a high EQ where he's brought, you know, high emotional quotient where he's brought out the best in all of these players. Every single player I can think of has gone up a level. It is unbelievable that Aston Villa have finished seventh in the Premier League, over 60 points, above Tottenham, above Brentford, above Fulham, because all of those clubs were way ahead of us when Professor Unai came in and turned us into a brilliant football team. This game today, if you were a neutral, Aston Villa versus Brighton, was an unbelievable football match. Two teams who were technically really, really good at football, believe in themselves when they're on the ball and will play the ball to each other in really tight situations, but don't get panicked. It was... Uh, uh, Aston Villa are going to Europe next season. It's been 13 years. You know, when when Aston Villa were got relegated in the most shameful manner possible... I genuinely wondered if I'd ever see Villa back in the Premier League again. I mean, we were we were the worst team ever to get relegated, considering our name, our reputation, our history. To get relegated in the way we do was unforgivable. It was shameful. The players were shameful. The board didn't care. The, uh, the manager was just clueless. I could have managed us and probably finished exactly the same that season. But... To see Villa, you know, go through what we've we've gone through in the championship, you know, struggled our way through, just about survived in the, the, the Tony Gere era. And then Sawiris and Edens come in with Christian Perzo as CEO. And you can't thank these people enough for what's happened because the turnaround has been unbelievable. Dean Smith, Jack Grealish, right? Huge parts of Aston Villa getting back to the Premier League, staying in the Premier League. And then the spine of that team... You know, you think of so many of those players, Tyro Mings, John McGinn, and then the players that came in, Esri Conser, Matty Cash, um, bloody Douglas Louise. It, it, it's just absolutely unbelievable to think that so many of those players that have been through the bad times helped us stay up and then got us into Europe under Unai Emery. It's just absolutely unbelievable. It's It's amazing to support this football team. It really is. To support this team at a time when you feel like the momentum's there, right? And when you feel like something is happening at long last, because bloody hell, Villa fans, we've endured a lot. We've endured a lot of rubbish. We've endured a lot of people who don't care. A lot of people, you know, and let's face it, we've endured a lot of, I don't know, the punditry, the the, the wider media that kind of overlooks Aston Villa. It, feel, it really feels like that. There's a reason Villa fans feel that, because... Quite frankly, we, you know, when Villa were climbing up the league table, it took a long time for people to bloody notice. Ten games in a row unbeaten. What was it? Eight wins in ten. Uh, you know, um, Ollie Watkins scoring in every game, uh, not conceding goals, and uh, so so yeah. I mean, I I just I just uh, Kazakhstan. Here we come. Shamrock Rove is in Ireland. I want you. Juventus, Italy, bring it on. Athletic Bilbao in Spain, whoever it is, I don't care. I want to play everybody because I believe this team 
our confidence, the way we play, it doesn't matter who we play, we'll give them a game and we'll, we, we'll beat them. That's how I believe at the moment. You know, going into, to, into the, the Brighton game today at Villa Park, firstly, you know, I said a couple of days ago, what Aston Villa need to do, start fast, like we did against Tottenham, like we did against Newcastle, as we did against, you know, um, I don't know, Brentford when we beat them 4-0. Start fast, get in, and, and on top of that, have the atmosphere at Villa Park cooking, get it started, get a Gordon Ramsay cooking, you know, and uh, it was. The Aston Villa fans, you know, I don't want to keep bloody belabouring the point, but I've said this before and I'll say it again. My Uncle John Dean, he said, the crowd will get you a goal. And today, Aston Villa's fans did it, just as we did against Manchester United, just as we did against Tottenham, as we did against Newcastle. Those fans, when the atmosphere is cooking, when it's when it's Gordon Ramsay cooking, the, the team get going. And they did. And we got the goal in the eighth minute. Unbelievable. Douglas Louise wins it. And he pushes forward. He pushes forward, lays it off to Ramsey. And Ramsey, 21 years of age. Happy birthday, Jacob. And do you know what he did? He holds on to it. Watch the replay back. He holds on to it. He holds on to it. Waits for the moment. Pass. Douglas Louise. In he comes. The midfielder. And, you know, player of the season. Supporters player of the season as well. What a goal. 1-0. It's just... Fantastic football. Fast start. Get going. Because against Brighton, you have to accept at some point Brighton are going to dominate the ball and they just will. And so you have to start fast and you have to get an early goal because then you can unsettle them. You can force them to probably play in a way they might not want to play. And then uh, from that, you know, after that, Jacob Ramsey. I mean, Jacob Ramsey. One of our own. You know, Birmingham's own, Aston Villa fan his whole life. To see him play the way he played today, he was unplayable. This kid has got levels to go to. He's currently at base camp of Mount Everest. He's looking up at the top of Mount Everest and thinking, that is where I can go to. And he can. With Unai Emery, you know, coaching him, think of where this kid can go to. You know, you think of Karni Chukwemeka last year and thinking he's going to leave Villa and go to Chelsea. Why? It's a basket case. And it, even if it isn't a basket case, it's a club where you're probably not going to get many minutes. Jacob Ramsey at Aston Villa, he's going to get the minutes. He's going to get coaches who are going to drill him into becoming the player that he can become. And as I say, he's at base camp of Everest right now today. He didn't. He wasn't at base camp. He was climbing to the summit. He climbed and he climbed and he climbed. And he got the assist for the first goal and for the second goal, once again, another assist. And he's, he, he, he plays it through. Lovely touch on to Ollie Watkins and the, the the poetic beauty of Ollie Watkins getting that goal. 15th of the season to get us into Europe. It was earned because without his goals, we ain't getting to Europe. And, you know, let's also credit for the second goal. You know, I said it the other day. I said, when Brighton lose the ball, they can look a bit chaotic defensively, right? And I think that happened two or three times today. And John McGinn, as the second striker, you know, Unai Emery likes to play an unfashionable second striker, as he did at Villarreal. And John McGinn, he's excelled against Liverpool as the second striker, and he excelled again today. He won the ball back off Alexis McAllister in a repeat of what happened at Brighton when Douglas Luiz won it off him and scored, you know, Danny Ings scored that second goal. McGinn wins it off him, and Leon Bailey, fair play, mate. You know, I've been critical of him. You know, I think um, Leon Bailey is a player with supernatural talent. But I think there's still frustration, frustrating parts of his game. But today, Bailey, that that pass into into Ramsey was fantastic, and again, it it caught Brighton off guard. Now, what I would say first half is that Brighton had tons of chances, and Evan Ferguson, a massively talented Irish player. And by the way, I'm mentioning Ireland. I also just want to mention today. I watched the game in uh, Feed the Yak and uh, Elephant and Castle. And I met Emmett and Rory, two Irish lads, County Clare, up the County Clare. Fantastic to meet you. Thank you so much for the nice thing you said about the podcast. But look, um, Evan Ferguson today, super talent. And uh, I think he'd probably look at it and think he should have scored his first chance where he was clean through. And his second chance, Bubakar Kamara, an incredible tackle. But I would say that was the first game I've seen it today where I thought Aston Villa's high line Slightly got caught out. It happened against Leicester and it happened against Liverpool a bit earlier this season. 
But I thought since that, we've sorted it out. But there were a couple of occasions where Brighton did catch it out. And I think that's full credit to Brighton, where they are just a fantastic football team. They're really good on the ball. And Villa and Brighton today, I thought massive credit to both clubs. Two football teams who, who you know, get overlooked, underrated. And the two of them have just turned up today and played fantastic football. And um, I think Brighton were probably unlucky not to get a second goal first half. But the goal they did get, Undav, I think you'd probably say maybe Mings fell asleep a little bit. You know, Mings has been absolutely phenomenal. He's been, I I think, could have been player of the season. Um, but Undav, I think you've got to give him credit for that touch he took off his head. Turns around and hits it. And I think, I think it was a fantastic first touch. Great goal. But then you're thinking, right, OK, the pressure's on. But when the pressure's on, this Aston Villa team bloody performs. They did it against Newcastle when we called it the acid test, beat them 3-0. Liverpool had to get a result with Liverpool at Anfield. And we bloody did it. When Liverpool are trying to get Champions League and Aston Villa just turn up and just play the way they did. Unbelievable. And second half today, you're thinking, right, the pressure's on. It's 2-1. Aston Villa of old would have gifted Brighton chances. We would. We'd have just panicked, um, you know, and, and, and given the ball away and it would have been a stupid goal and we'd all be sitting there going, oh, for God's sake. Typical Villa. Do you know what typical Villa is now? It's, it's composure. It's, it's, it's um, tactical nous. It's belief in yourself. And to the, in second half, did Brighton have a chance? Brighton didn't have a single chance. In fairness, second half, it could have been 4-1 Villa. You know, that, uh, you know, Bailey's ball across to Jacob Ramsey. I think the bounce in front of Ramsey, I know it looks like a terrible miss. And yes, it was a bad miss. But you, sometimes the ball bounces in front of you and you can't quite, it's such speed as well. You can't keep it down. So in fairness to him, I'm willing to, I'll give Ramsey that because he's got two assists. He's been an absolutely phenomenal player today. And he looked like someone, as I say, Mount Everest is up there. He's been at base camp and he's climbing up. And his, his form recently has been off the charts, that Brighton could not handle the man first half. When he got the ball on the half turn and he sprinted and he ran at them and he darted at them, they couldn't deal with it. The levels this boy can go to, Jacob Ramsey, captain of England, I hear you say, it's, it's happening. And, you know, you know the, the Liverpool, uh, uh, the media that I spoke to recently, they told me if he should come available, they'll go for him. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. This is the start of something for Aston Villa now. We are not a club who loses our best players and we sure as hell don't lose our best homegrown players. And so second half, Aston Villa, uh, to, to keep the composure the way they did, to be as tactically aware as we were and to come out of that game thinking Brighton didn't have a single chance second half and to think that Villa could have made it 3 or 4-1 what do you say? You say, Professor Unai Emery, you know exactly what we need. I just, I'm just in disbelief. I just, you know, I'm going, I'm going to try and go, uh, bloody, um, you know, <sighs> Braveheart here, Mel Gibson in Braveheart. Try and do something. What Unai Emery has done at Aston Villa. Is an absolutely incredible achievement. But it's not just what Unai Emery's done. It's what the players have done as well. Because at the start of the season, we were like, are the players good enough? And the things that Steven Gerrard said made you believe that maybe they're not. But the fact was, from the first day of the season, when we lost 2-0 at Bournemouth, right through until we lost 3-0 at Fulham, you just knew this was a man... Steven Gerrard was a manager who, quite frankly, didn't know what the hell he was doing. He came in and he acted Billy Big Bollocks. Do you really think he sits around and watches tapes of bloody Fulham all week long? I, no, I don't. I just don't think he does. Maybe he did, but I don't think he does. And if he did, I think he wouldn't recognise what, what the, their potential pitfalls were. Whereas Unai Emery comes in, the connection with the fan base is off the charts. He comes in and he shows such respect, like he believes in this football club. Like he, make, like he believes that Aston Villa can be more than what we are. And I've always believed Villa can look at Tottenham. You know, 10 years ago, people laughed at Tottenham and they made it to a Champions League final. They were a regular top four team. 
Um, you know, people laughed at Atletico Madrid and they won La Liga twice. They made it to two Champions League finals. They've won Euro the Europa League two or three times. And Aston Villa have to look at those teams and think, this is what we can be. This is what we are. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just, I, can't, I, I, want, I want to cry. I want to cry. It's, to think of Aston Villa away days in Kazakhstan next season. To think of an Aston Villa team going to bloody Italy and Spain and the Netherlands and Scandinavia and Poland and wherever. It's just... Thank you, Professor Unai. Thank you, the players, for stepping up when it counted, for going to levels that, you know, your previous manager never recognised that you could get to. Tyra Mings needs to look him in the eye. Well, I tell you what, Stephen Gerrard needs to look Unai Emery in the eye and say, how did you do it? What is it that makes you so good at coaching? Why do you regularly get teams like, you know, Valencia, Villarreal, um, Sevilla to, um, to, to perform to the levels that they do? Um, what a fantastic season it's turned out to be. And, you know, to think where Villa can go from here, to think what we could be, to think of the exciting summer that's coming up, to see us play as a football team, that that's so comfortable on the ball, that can that, that can play in different ways, get, that can can react when you know when another team is dominating or creating chances, that we can react and stop them creating them chances as we did today. It's just it's just off the charts. Uno Emery, I want to write your poetry. You know, if if the if, if the Titanic sank, and you know, like Jack and Rose are on that little little doorway that's floating in the sea, Professor Unai, I'm jumping off the I'm do, jumping off the door and I'm letting you have it because you, you, what you've done is just uh, just uh. siempre con nosotros which I think is, I think means uh, always with us in Spanish um, it's it's just you know I'm I'm struggling for words here I, I I need to go away and write a novel about this I need to write a a poetry I need to write a you know a soliloquy about the guy Uno Emery what he's done is just 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 unbelievable and thank you so much for everybody who watches this channel who says really nice things in the comments it's great to hear what you think about where we can go next season this has been an unbelievable achievement what a football club. And you know to think, you know Tottenham made a Champions League final. Can Aston Villa do it? Would you bet against us? As the as the late great Ron Saunders said, the man who won us a league, the man who set the stall up for us to win the Europa the European Cup. Would you bet against us? I would not bet against this team. I would not bet against this fan base, and I would not bet against Aston Villa Football Club. Where we go from here, we look up and we see the stars. We we look up and we see the, the top of Mount Everest. Let's let's do it. Let's believe. Let's let's do it. What a football club! What a team! Up the mighty Aston Villa.